In this video, I will show you a trading strategy that shows how you can use the MFI indicator. This is Mark from tradeinform.com and welcome to this video. In this video, I am talking about the MFI indicator or money flow index. And this is the second video in my new series on the MFI indicator. If you'd like to check out the first video, there is a link on the screen at the moment and you can do so. In the first video, I talk about what the MFI is and how to calculate it. But in this video, I am talking about a trading strategy and I am using the SPY Spider ETF to demonstrate it. The reason I'm using the SPY is because there is lots of historical data. It is the oldest ETF. It is one of the most widely traded and there is, and it is consequently has low cost of trading and lots of liquidity. So the MFI strategy that I'm going to talk about in this video has a couple of key things. Firstly, of course, we're using the MFI. We're going to be using a market filter, an overall filter to identify long and short trades. And thirdly, this trading strategy is designed to get large percentage trades. So it is a, it's not a quick trading strategy. I've had quite a few of those recently. If you want to check out some of my other videos, this is a strategy that takes long swing trades that can be held for pretty long periods of time for most traders. But as a consequence, we get some large percentage trades. On the screen at the moment, you can see the SPY. It's a chart of the SPY ETF. I also have volume at the bottom and the MFI indicator here. Now, as I explained in the previous video, the MFI, what makes it interesting and different and why more traders should be aware of it is because it uses volume as part of the calculation. Now, the trading strategy that I am going to introduce is nice and simple, but the thing is about simple trading strategies is it's always possible to refine them and also there is less to go wrong when market conditions change. Now, there are two key components for this trading strategy. The first one of these is the linear regression. I often use the 200 period linear regression shown on the screen at the moment. And I usually use it in terms of the direction. Which way is it pointing? Is it pointing upwards or downwards? Now you can see in this market here, it is pointing upwards. So at this point here, we have an upwardly sloping linear regression. If I was just to move this, move it slightly back in time, you can see that there is a time period here when the market is pointing downwards. And this is a downwardly sloping linear regression. Now, I'm only going to take long trades when the linear regression is pointing upwards and only going to take short trades if I take them at all when it is pointing downwards. Now, the second part of this trading strategy is the MFI indicator and I'm using it here with an oversold line here. So I am going to take long trades when the market is coming back out of an oversold condition and the linear regression is pointing upwards. On the screen I'm showing the backtest model that I've used to test this trading strategy. Over here on the left in yellow is the historical data. This is the SPY ETF historical price and volume data. Just scroll across. We can see the calculations for the money flow index, other calculations used for the backtest and for the trailing stops and closing. And scroll over even further, we have long and short trades. Now, these are the results that I have got with this trading strategy, and I'm just going to check this box. So we're going to have a look at long only. Now, the reason, and I'm going to explain later, while well, I'm going to show this strategy as a long only or a long short option, and which you would choose to do, it depends on how you think about the markets. So quickly, I've shown how we're entering and exiting. I've shown how we're entering the market using the MFI and linear regression. We're using a fixed fractional position sizing system and we're using the percentage to calculate both our stops and our position sizing. 
You can see here I've got a rather large profit target of 25% and a still pretty significant stop loss multiplier. So we're getting somewhere close to between 4 and 5 to 1 reward to risk. If I can show over here, we're also backing this up with 76% winning trades. So that is a pretty that is a ratio that I'm quite comfortable with. I'm not using a trailing stop. Now here is the MFI level that I have tested, which is 35. So if the MFI comes from below to above 35, we can take a long trade. Now the exit, this is a strength exit, and this is something, if you've seen any of my other videos, that I often like to do. And this is simply if we have three consecutive higher closes of at least 0.75%, then we can exit the trade. This is a way of getting out of the market while the going's good. While we have an exuberant market, we can take some profits off the table. I've got a couple of scenarios here. The first of these tests are strength exit. We can test trading the next day open because some people obviously prefer to do that rather than trade the closing price. That's easy to toggle on and off. And you can see it makes a small difference. I've already said I'm taking this trading this long only. Now let's have a look at the results. In terms of what I was trying to achieve, a, large, a high average trade expectancy of nearly 8%, which is very good. This means that the cost of trading becomes a much smaller part of our profits. Whereas if we had lots of trades and smaller trades, cost of trading, the cost of the spread, the cost of slippage would be a much greater factor. So we've actually not got very many trades at all considering the time period. But we have a high number of percentage winning trades and we are holding on to some of these trades for a long time for most traders to allow our trade expectancy, to allow the trade time to mature. If you ever want to hit a 25% profit target, especially when you're trading an index tracker like this, you're going to need to hold the position for an extended period of time. We got relatively low drawdown considering the size of the stop loss. So we've got 18% over this time period and we've got a decent MA ratio, nothing spectacular, but a decent ratio. Compound annual growth rate of 8%. Of course, this is always a factor of how much leverage we're using. If we want to increase our leverage, so in other words, risk twice as much per trade, you can see it makes a big difference to our annual growth rate, whilst at the same time increasing drawdown. And how high you want to increase your leverage depends on your level of risk tolerance. We can see the underlying market here as well. Now, I said long and short trades. Now, there's a, a very significant thing for long and, short, long and short trades. If you're trading equity markets, if you're trading stocks, if you're trading indices, if you're trading ETFs that are based on either stocks or indices, long and short trades are not often symmetrical because markets behave differently when they're going down to when they're going up. So quite often a index strategy such as this will be long only and that will be fine. When we're in a bear market, we'll just sit this one out. However, there is a way to trade this one short and we can have a look at that by checking this box here. So I'm using a similar but slightly different principle for the short trades. See, I'm using exactly the same entry level. So I'm using it when the linear regression is pointing downwards and the MFI falls below this level, then we enter short. So rather of this being a retracement entry, it becomes more of a momentum entry. You can see the difference here. Net profit is being predominantly created by our long trades and we have a higher percentage number of them trades, a number of winning long trades. However, overall net profit is higher. So when the markets do go down, when we have a bear market, it is usually a good idea to be trading short, but it is 
difficult to do so and historically speaking there are not many bear markets although they loom large in our in our minds we always think the next one is around the corner in fact we haven't had one for more than 10 years so it's very difficult to test a strategy that takes into account bear markets and looks as good as a long strategy however overall net profit will be greater if we do and when we come into a bear market generally we want to be trading short in order to maximize our profits over the long term okay i hope you found this video useful as i mentioned in the first video if you would like to get a free copy of the mfi indicator calculations you can do so by clicking on the link and subscribing to the free trade informed newsletter and if you want more information about trading the financial markets and in particular about backtesting your trading strategies, please go to www.tradeinformed.com.